What's good everyone, OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Today we've got some awesome topics for you guys. But before we get into that, please make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe if you're someone new and you enjoy daily content. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into it. And we're starting off with why so many people underestimated the Nintendo Switch. Now this is playing off of a topic that we had recently on the channel, one of my previous videos, with the NPD sales for February 2021, where it looks at the biggest market in the world, the United States, and where the sales are. Now, the Nintendo Switch was once again the top system sold, but we actually have some numbers that I want to talk about just a little bit more, and that is the Switch hardware numbers for the month. Now, the estimates put it around 753,000 units somewhere between that and also 613,000 but either way it was still enough to be the best selling platform for the month and also in dollar sales it was the highest dollar sales amount since the Wii back in 2009 so over a decade and that kind of goes to show you if you look back and you look at the damage that Nintendo Switch is doing when it comes to the industry the amount of sales that it's getting how did people miss on this so much? Myself included when it comes to the early start of it. I did come around once we started seeing some of the games, the January 2017 presentation. I think that convinced me that the Nintendo Switch could be a 100 million plus seller system. And I started talking about it in videos and I started talking about it on Twitter and people would argue and all this and that. And I was kind of thinking, why did so many people underestimate it? Like, what's going on here? If you look at the concept and you look at what Nintendo's done in the past, it would have been like a sure bet that this thing was going to be like on fire. But I think I figured out what the issue is. If you look at this, right? 750,000 units, breaking records left and right, breaking the dollar amount sales from the Nintendo DS, right? Nintendo's all-time best-selling platform what was going on here? And I think it's because people in general, especially here in the West, underestimate the portable side of what Nintendo does. They underestimate the type of reach and the marketing and what Nintendo's done in the portable side, the portable aspect of the market, and they try to override that with the home console. They override it with the mistakes or what are perceived mistakes from what Nintendo's done in the past, how they've been beat sales-wise from other companies, right? Even the GameCube, when the newcomer came into the console space, the Xbox, the original Xbox, outsold it. You look at the N64 compared to the PS1. You look at the Wii, but oh yeah, that was only casuals. Now, when you look at the Switch, it was proposed as a home console that you can take on the go. Many people just kind of cut out that go part and said, Home console, home console, home console. Well, that's all I'm going to take it as, and that's all it is. And I think that's the type of thought process or mindset going into it that makes you cut out what they've done previously with the portable systems and the type of massive success that they've had. And if you think about it, heck, even with the last generation, with the Wii U and the Nintendo 3DS, you can combine those sales together, and that's almost 100 million right there. So if you took better marketing, a better device, more games, and you put them all together on one platform for a good enough price, that is a home run that some people did see. Let's not say everybody. Some people did see, but a lot of people didn't. And I think the reason why for the underestimation was because of the Wii U. The Wii U itself dominated headlines for it flopped, it wasn't good, it's horrible. There was miscommunication from Nintendo, they should all be fired. Like even during the 3DS's reign in terms of selling so well, what dominated all of the media and conversations was the Wii U. So going to the Nintendo Switch, I can see why people just wanted to ignore the Nintendo 3DS and say Wii U, Wii U this, Wii U that, it's not gonna be successful. But what people weren't understanding is that the Nintendo 3DS line was going to be essentially done when the Switch came out. Nintendo didn't green light any big or new type of games outside of what they already had planned for the Nintendo 3DS. So this is something that they didn't tell us. They said, oh yeah, we're still gonna be supporting the 3DS. And I think some people took it as, okay, well, 3DS is still gonna get so much play and time and games, and that's gonna maybe take away from the Nintendo Switch and what it can do. Or maybe some people just felt, hey, you know what? Wii U flopped, so Switch is gonna flop too. No third party this, third party that. Let's ignore all the games that they talked about and all this. Now for me, once I got to that January presentation, I was pretty much sold on this thing 
sign 100 million plus. I was told that this was going to be a fire system because it seemed like, yeah, there was like no Nintendo 3DS there. And if you're still planning on supporting the 3DS, they'd probably say something with it in terms of like, hey, well, we still have this, or it's like a second pillar or this and that. They didn't mention it at all. And while they did mention it throughout 2017, it was already on its way out. There wasn't really any new games that they talked about. So for me, the underestimation of the portable systems in comparison when it comes to the Western media is the reason why so many people underestimated the Nintendo Switch, the hybrid concept and what's going on. It is not a home console. It is not just a portable, especially the regular Switch. Switch Lite's a little bit of a different thing. It is a hybrid. It is both. It can do the home console functions and it can also do the portable functions as well. And so many people overlook look that in order to kind of push one thing or another when it's not it's something new it's a hybrid for nintendo so to me i always looked at nintendo's portable systems and gave them the credit that they i think deserved and that's why i was kind of high up on this system and to be honest that kind of got you some hate back then some people were like oh you're just fanboying for it and this and that but overall, it ended up being correct. So it's interesting to say the least. But I also look at it too, because like on Twitter and on social media, I'll see what people are saying and kind of what the atmosphere is out there. And people still just say Nintendo flopped during the whole Wii U era and don't like to bring up the 3DS, even still to this day, despite the 3DS selling 75 million plus for not having like any third party Western support, like almost zero Western support outside of indies. There was no major games. There was a few here and there, but nothing really. I mean, they just dropped it right and the switch has way more western support from independent companies and also from major third parties as well so that's the biggest difference that we're kind of dealing with here and why the switch is kind of shot past the 3ds on top of that it's got major japanese support too so it's kind of like a home run when it comes to japanese support and maybe a double when it comes to western support because it's missing some of the bigger end AAA games missing a lot of them in terms of the major ones but there are some stuff like skyrim and some other games as well that people can pick up and play so so what are you guys' thoughts on this when it comes to the underestimation of the Nintendo Switch, the huge sales that we're seeing here with the system, potentially going to pass up the Wii this year? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the next topic here, guys. We've got a huge Square Enix sale that is going down right now on the Nintendo eShop. You guys can get some amazing deals on some Square Enix games. And you guys know me. I love me some Square Enix. I'm going to go over the full list here and then pick out my OJ Select the best ones that you guys can check out because a lot of you guys were interested in this in my live stream so Square Enix is having a eShop sale on the switch and also a few titles on the 3ds but we're not talking about that today we're not talking about that all right you guys can check out the link if you guys want to see more on that we're going over the switch stuff so starting off at the top we have Chuckabo's Mystery Dungeon everybody Collection of Mana, Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest 2, Dragon Quest 3, Fear Effect Sedna, Final Fantasy 9, Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 8, Remastered, Final Fantasy 10 slash 10 2 HD Remastered, Final Fantasy 12, The Zodiac Age, Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition, Forgotten End, I Am Setsuna, Lost Fear, I can't say this name, but it's called Transfixed Edition, Oh My Goodness, or Oh My Godheads, not goodness, Oh My Goodness, I can't read this, Oh My Godheads, Party Edition, Oninaki, Romancing Saga 2, Romancing Saga 3, Saga Scarlet Grace Ambitions, Splunker Party, Star Ocean, First Departure R, Trials of Mana, and World of Final Fantasy Maxima. Very good games here, guys. I'm going to go over some big picks that you need to take a look at. So, Trials of Mana. This is a phenomenal game. So, it's from the collection of Mana. There's a game on there, Seiken Densetsu 3. Never originally released here in the US when it came out on the Super Nintendo. They released that later for the collection of Mana in its Super Nintendo glory. Then they took that game and then they remade it into a full 3D action adventure RPG and it's just great it's $29.99 I had a ton of fun playing it there's a lot of replay value because there's a bunch of different characters that you can use and different stuff that happens based on the team party that you go through I mean it's just fun it's just a flat out fun action RPG game I actually really like it and it's only 30 bucks on this sale so I definitely recommend some trials of mana now next up you cannot forget the Final Fantasy games, guys. Final Fantasy is one of the most legendary franchises of all time, and it's just great to see all of these amazing Final Fantasy games on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, you have Final Fantasy IX for $10.49. You have Final Fantasy VII for $7.99. You have Final Fantasy VIII Remastered, which is definitely my pick, because it's $9.99. 
and it has the reverse engineered new end type of graphics. It looks great. It looks really good because they lost like the source code so they have to kind of like remake the game you know but it's just fantastic man i love final fantasy 8 remastered i really do and final fantasy 10 slash 10 2 hd remastered that's 24 dollars 99 that's usually 50 bucks so not bad there final fantasy 12 the zodiac age another really good game and i think that kind of was the precursor to them going over to some of the other stuff that they've done with final fantasy when it comes to uh gaming and stuff like that man kind of seeing like okay well the action system does kind of work with Final Fantasy in terms of what we're doing here. Plus, Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition, you can just skip that one. You don't got to worry about it. But 12 The Zodiac Age and also 10 slash 10 to HD Remastered. Those are both very good, $24.99 each. I would suggest any one of the Final Fantasy games there. They're all phenomenal. I think the Dragon Quest games, those ones are also really good. Those are the ports of the Android version of the game. So it doesn't have like that original pixel sprite based look. Some people might not like that, but it is what it is there. Also Collection of Mana is really good. So you can't go wrong with it. But man, if I had to pick here, if I had to pick one of them, and if you don't have any of these games, man, it's going to be either Trials of Mana or it's definitely going to be something like Final Fantasy VIII Remastered because you're going to get some nice, beautiful, redone graphics. You're going to get that original gameplay. Nothing's cut out or rearranged or moved around. You're going to get some nice additions in terms of quality of life and everything. So it's very good. Same thing goes for Zodiac Age. Some nice additions, quality of life stuff in there too, man. So I said go with one, then I picked like a bunch of them there. <laughs> But yeah, man, you guys can check it out yourself, see the gameplay, see what you guys think. I'm just a huge fan of the Square Enix titles, so of course, you know, I'm going to definitely talk about it. So what are your thoughts on this Square Enix sale that's going down? And of course, what do you think about the people that underestimated the Nintendo Switch up to 753,000 units sold for this past month, breaking records left and right? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Check out the links in the description. We've got Twitter. Going to give us a follow on there stay up to date on all latest gaming news and information. Also, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you can. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you for the next one. Peace.